Good evening, bonsoir and guten abend. Uh, that is the extent of my horrendous language knowledge. Most of that was probably wrong as well. Anyway, good evening. It is Monday the something or other of something or other, 20th of November. I knew that without even looking. That's how good I am. Um, and it's one of my after work sessions to unwind and relax. Uh, I haven't gone to Southbourne. I've come slightly further west to Manor Steps Zigzag. Um, I did a video here once, didn't I? It was a couple of years ago. Can't really remember. Can't even remember what I caught. I think I probably caught a ray. I might have even had a turbot. Did I catch a turbot? I don't know. I have to go watch my own videos, wouldn't I, to remind, well, no, remember what I caught. Anyway, just a relaxed session. That's all I want tonight. I've had a really good day in the shop. Um, actually, I've had a really good couple of weeks, really. I've just been very, uh, very happy. I've been in a good place in my life, I think. The, um, the shop has been quiet because the weather's been rubbish. <laughs> but other than that, and I think it just corresponds to how much I've been fishing. I've been getting out loads, you know, at least twice a week for the last few weeks. Um, and that just puts me in a good place. It really settles my brain down, I think. So I get to uh, go to work all day long and I'm lucky enough to quite enjoy my job. Um, and then I get to go fishing in the evening and relax and catch a few fish. And life is good, really. Um, in between that and at weekends, obviously, family time. Also really rather wonderful. Um, and also some really, really, really good news. And I'm not 100% sure if I'm supposed to be advertising this publicly. Apologies if I'm not. But Toby, my right-hand man, my number one in the shop there, um, is now a daddy. That is great news, so massive congratulations to Toby and Lucy um, on the, the birth of baby Nora at eight pound five three. Oh, Toby, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your PB, mate. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful young lady. Um, so I'm super, super chuffed for them. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of, lot of happiness ahead for you both. And sleepless nights and stress, but mostly happiness. Well, you probably know what the plan is in terms of fishing. Because I don't really want to be running around doing too much, I have got a bagnell bar, sandal wrapped with squid. Actually, I've also got some anchovies with me. And I can't decide whether to use them as bait or eat them. I shall decide. Um, obviously, bait. Um, so that has launched as far as I possibly can. I don't know why, actually. You know, prove that you don't have to cast very far to catch fish. But um, sometimes I just really fancy clipping it and whacking it. Anybody else get that? Get down beach, oh, show off your manliness or leaderliness if you're not a manly person. Or, in fact, a man. Uh, lost the plot completely there. Uh, and then the other rod has obviously got a head and guts of mackerel because I'm still hoping to pick up a big bass at some point before the year is out. Um, and then I'm going to sit down. I've got a nice little mug of hot chocolate. And uh, kick back and relax stare at my rod tips. If anything happens, I shall uh, bring it in and show you guys. If it doesn't, then so be it. It's such a nice night to be out. Northwesterly winds, shelter from the cliffs. It's not gone cold yet. The sea settled down a little bit. It's just a little bit of sea still coming, which is nice. Um, actually, poo tides. I mean, proper, like, professional levels of poo tides. So it's a, it's a neap, and I'm fishing down to low at about nine. Um, so normally that would be rubbish tides. Um, I'm happy to fish low, but on a slightly bigger tide. I reckon in four days time, Thursday, Friday, yeah, probably actually in time for the weekend, the tide just should start to build. Um, and that's the best bit. The best tides for fishing are just a couple of days after the neap, building up towards the spring. That's always the best. Um, I always find the building tides, like the gaming tides, are coming towards the spring tides, um, always better than the other way around. So, you know, a couple of days after the spring going down towards the neaps, usually a little bit quieter than the other way around. Um, in terms of the low tide thing, that doesn't bother me one iota. This is, uh, this is Pool Bay, you can go fishing on any state of tide. Right, because I always start every scene with the word right and a hand clap. I must stop doing that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Do I just start talking? How do I do this? Uh, no, I don't know. 
because I need a little bit of content in my video, I can't just film, come down and say, hi, I'm fishing, here's my hot chocolate, bye. Um, I thought I might as well show you uh, me baiting up with an anchovy. Now, I think we've done this before in the past, but not all of you have watched all my videos, and some of you are new, so let's, uh, let's do a little quick baiting demo. Um, I am going to use a little bit of squid, which we have here, and one of these beautiful anchovies. Now, if you haven't used anchovies before, do give them a go. They're a wonderful, really, really oily and bloody smelly bait. They're a wonderful fish. They really are. Don't go confusing them with the salty things that um, you put on pizzas. Do you know, I've just started. I've realised I've been just automatically doing everything and not explaining what I'm doing. Should we start all this demonstration again? <laughs> right, get yourself a, um, an anchovy. Here we go. Here is one anchovy. I will be chopping the head just behind the gills and chopping, just sort of squaring it off a little bit behind the tail somewhere back here. Um, so that leaves us with approximately eight centimetres of bait. <laughs> you don't have to be that precise. Um, I'm then going to cut with your scissors, decent pair of good quality sharp scissors, essential for everything you do in fishing. Um, basically, I'm taking the fillet off of this, so I'm cutting down the belly, down the backbone, um, and I've kind of chopped that anchovy down the middle lengthways. And I'm just going to trim off any bits of backbone. There we go, there we have a beautiful anchovy fillet. Um, that's a relatively soft-ish bait, but it's a weird one, the anchovy. It's kind of soft, but as you start applying the bait elastic, it kind of firms up, which is weird. Don't quite know how it does that. Um, but as I do with a lot of my uh, sort of soft fish baits, like sprats, things like that, I'm going to use a little bit of squid. Um, this is obviously adds a bit of flavour, but it also just helps hold the sort of bait together, sort of binds the fish together. Um, so I'm going to use the same length as the anchovy I've just chopped, but just a relatively thinnish strip, okay? That's it, that's a really bad, it's a real rough cut that one was, but there we go. Um, so we've got a filleted anchovy and a strip of squid. Get your two-pronged bait tool. I have got these longer ones in stock now, um, so anybody's used the the shorter black ones or the Yuki baiting tools, that sort of thing. Um, there's a slightly longer version um, on the website. Kind of handy for these sort of longer baits or for sand deals, things like that. Um, I'm just going to lay the tool on top of the fillet, like so. I'm going to get my mi'ook and lay that on top of the fillet. And then I'm going to get my squid and sandwich all that together. So that's kind of where we are right now. So a bit of a squid, hook, bait tool, anchovy sandwich. Um, just sort of holding it together with your finger and thumb like that. And then just start gently whipping up with the bait last and just sort of gently working down and around. Don't pull too tightly with bait elastic. You don't really want to be cutting into your bait too much. Okay, so all the way down one way. Go at a slight sort of 45 degree angle. I'm going to gently whip back up the other way. And because I like using lots of bait elastic, I'm going to do the same again. So I'm going to go another 45 degree angles back down the other way like that. And then just a couple of wraps down there. And snap. Ta -da. So that is our sort of squid and anchovy sausage. Grab hold of your bait, slide the tool out, and what we should have is a nice long thin sort of sausage bait. So long and thin, so aerodynamics is good, this should cast well. I always use my well, the T25 circle hooks as the, for the top of my panel, which I just hook into the top of the bait like so. And that is that. That is how I present my anchovy. Nice and simple. Um, and then if you are using a bagnall bar, and you haven't done this before, the bottom hook goes on the imp, and the cascade clips into 
the swivel at the top there, just above the spring. There we go, that's a nice streamlined bait, ready to blast out of the horizon, hopefully catch a nice big hungry fish. Not sure if I haven't got a fish on there. Probably not a big fish if I have. Oh. I have. First cast on the bass rod. Nice bar of silver. Not a massive one. Maybe sort of, it's quite fat, I don't know, two and a half, three pounds, something like that. Really was hooked right in the corner of the mouth in that circle hook. That's a beauty. That's a nice little start to the session. Pretty funny bite. It's sort of like, donk, donk, and then slack. So I kind of rounded up, donk, slack. It just kept sort of coming towards me. Didn't do any of the really sort of powerful, aggressive bites that sometimes these fish close in give you but there's lots of these around at the minute um, so if you have got a free evening to pop down get out there chuck a head of mackerel out and get yourself some bass nice eating size fish that too isn't it well not quite as exciting as a bass but on the distance rod on the sand hill I caught myself a whiting sadly that's uh, a very deeply hooked whiting so that'll be coming home for dinner as well so I've got a bass and whiting uh, pie coming up. <laughs> what, a, what a waste of a bass that would be, but there we go. A couple of things to eat. Um, hopefully there's not too many of these. I don't mind catching these. I don't mind catching fish. Um, but sometimes if it's one of these every single cast on your ray rig, it can get a little bit frustrating. Um, but there we go. Two fish on the first two casts. Hopefully the fish will bugger off so I can sit down, enjoy my cocoa and watch the football in a minute. Although it's England, North Macedonia, so maybe I'll concentrate on the fishing instead. A bit of a drop back bite on the uh, distance rod. Only been out there 10 minutes with that anchovy. Let's see what we got. Uh, bit of weight. Yeah, it doesn't feel like the grip's digging because it's moving, so there is a bit of weight on there. Um, not a huge amount. I'm calling dog, I'm calling dog people. I'm not calling the dog people, sorry, that came out wrong. I'm predicting a dogfish. Called it right. We have a woofer. First woofer of the night. So that's bass, whiting, and a dogfish so far. Three species and three casts. Hmm. A nice little after work session this is turning out to be. Another doggo on the next cast on the distance rod. That was on the sand deal this time. A tiny little dog to be fair. Um, there's quite a few fish out there because that's not been out there maybe 10 minutes again. Uh, but yeah, there's a few fish around tonight which is nice. The football started about a quarter of an hour in. Nothing to report on that one. So it's definitely a fishing video, not a football reporting video. I'm totally sure if I hadn't gone slack again. Anyway, let's get this little puppy back. See if we can catch a bigger one. Another little whiting. That has been a fish on every cast so far. Although not exactly that exciting. Um, apart from the bass. At least there's plenty of fish around. Uh, fish is going still better than the football, which is still nil nil. Right, I've just hit a little lull in the fishing. Um, I just had two casts without a fish. Shock horror. We're just about to get onto low, dead low. Um, so I expect a little period of, of quiet. Um, the football, just don't mention the football. We did get it back to one all. What is the score? Yep, still one all. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Anyway, um, yeah, so the, the fishing is slow, the football is rubbish, um, but I've had a great night, to be honest. It's ticked the box of exactly what I wanted to do. An unwind after work. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Nice bonus bass as well, so I've got me dinner. Um, I could, if I wanted to, wait for that lovely hour after low 
and then for a couple of hours period where the fishing will pick up again and I expect to catch a few more fish. But that will then push me through until 10, 11 at night and that sort of thing and I'll just be tired and grumpy in the shop tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to pack up reasonably early tonight. I got down here pretty quickly. Um, nice thing about it being so dark so, so early is you can come down straight from work and you're straight into dark fishing, aren't you? It was a random waffle, wasn't it? <laughs> no, my point was, I don't need to stay late tonight. I've, I've come down, I've thoroughly enjoyed my session on the beach. I'm thoroughly relaxed, caught some fish, and that's good enough for me. Um, I am back out on Wednesday. Um, Liam messaged me, complaining that I went out with a homeless looking person that wasn't him. Uh, for all of you guys who didn't watch my last video with Kim, he's referring to him. Um, thanks for all the positive vibes from that video, by the way. That was a really good good time with Kim. I know he's been out a couple more times and he's thoroughly enjoying it, which is awesome. Um, hopefully I get out with him again at some point. Um, so yeah, my next one will be Wednesday with Liam. Can't decide where to take him. I've got a day or two to think about that. Hmm. Maybe I'll take him to a barber's and chop all that hair off. I don't know. But we should see. But anyway, I'll see you on that one anyway. <laughs>